Hi, and welcome to this video series where I answer questions from the readers of Monovator.com. Uh, Monovator is the leading finance block in, uh, in the UK for personal finance issues. Um, the, the question in this series comes from uh, Richard, who asks whether um, you should really be hedging currency investments in uh, global equity trackers. This applies to other um, non-domestic investments too, I assume. Um, just to explain what I think Richard means is if you take as an example someone who invests a hundred pounds sterling into a global tracker, um, it doesn't quite work this way, but the way to think about it is um, the provider will take this hundred pounds, uh, FX the money into various currencies and buy underlying stocks for those currencies. So for example, they would take the hundred pounds, FX it into dollars and among other stocks buy Facebook shares. Um, this would create a, a dollar sterling exposure. And Richard's question is, should you really be hedging this exposure? Um, so in sh on balance, I don't think you should. Um, now, there are a couple of reasons for this. One is it's actually really hard to know exactly what your FX exposure is. Um, the, the, the reason for this is that um, you know the, the, the companies that you're buying shares in themselves have a lot of FX exposure. They might be hedging. If you take Facebook as an example, they have operations all over the world, including actually in the UK, and it can be hard to know exactly whether uh, what you what you actually should be hedging. Um, furthermore, um, I think something like 50% of the earnings of something like the S and P 500 is actually made outside the U.S. in a very in a wide array of currencies, and um, so that slightly mitigates the issue and could actually mean that your currency hedging is done wrong. The second um, reason you shouldn't be currency hedging, I think, is that it's, it can really be quite expensive and, and, as I alluded to, quite imprecise. Not only if you got, for the reasons I mentioned, but also even if you did get the exposure right, you should really constantly be trading around as, current, as, as, as shares in the various currencies move up and down. This would uh, lead to a, a very significant transaction and admin costs, which would impair your returns in, well, in any currency. Um, the third argument why I don't think you should be hedging your FX exposure is that um, you, FX exposure can actually be a diversifier. So um, if you think of your, your hundred pound sterling, um, you know, you're buying not only exposure to uh, companies in many, many countries, but you're also buying exposure to many currencies. So if there is a shock in your local currency, in this case the sterling, um, you, the fact that you hadn't hedged the currency actually means that that, that you'd be better off. Um, and shocks in currency markets tend to move against your local currencies. It's rare, less rarely a shock up. Um, so, so actually this is not only is it cheaper, less cumbersome, etc., but it's actually probably a good thing to not be currency hedged. The argument for currency hedging is that you should be investing your money in the currency where you eventually need the money. But... Um, and, and I think there's some truth to that. But if despite these advantages, so the admin, transaction cost, the natural diversifying, the hard, the, the, that it's hard to know what it actually, what the, the right exposure is, despite these facts, you still want a currency as I, I question whether you really should be investing as, as, in as risky an asset as equity markets can be. So I hope that answers the question. Um, my name is Lars Croyer. I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple of books about finance, and I'm now doing these videos uh, as a hobby. Um, the premise of a lot of my work revolves around uh, how hard it is for the vast majority of investors to outperform the markets. I explain what this means and why it's very likely a hugely positive thing for um, investors to understand and embrace this premise. Uh, you can watch other YouTube videos or read my books if you're more interested in this. Um, but thanks for watching. There are other videos in this uh, Q&A uh, video series, but in any case, I hope you found this one interesting.